This is the real origin story of Iron Man. Tony Stark, an average 15-year-old boy living in Queens, New York City. Hey guys, how's it going? He lives with his Aunt May and Uncle Ben, who treat him as if he was their very own son. Tony is natural-born scientific genius with a knack for building things. To which Uncle Ben would always say, With great power comes great responsibility. Tony is undoubtedly ambitious, but he may also have a bad habit of using his best friends Pepper and Rhodey as unwilling test subjects. Yo, dude, you sure about this? A hundred percent? Nobody's gonna get seriously injured, I promise. One day, he drags Pepper and Rhodey to a science fair to watch a demonstration. Whilst Tony is busy taking pictures, something that would change his life forever is about to happen. He gets burnt by a searing hot radioactive clothing iron! Ah! Did this thing just appear out of nowhere? Later that night, Tony struggles to stay awake as he gets home and falls into a deep, deep slumber. Unbeknownst to him, his body is undergoing an amazing transformation. The next morning, Tony wakes up with perfect eyesight. He's also grown red and gold armor plates all over his body overnight. He can now also shoot beams out of his hands and chest. Holy smokes! This is amazing! Tony, is everything okay up there? Sorry, Ame. It's nothing. Tony keeps his newfound powers a guarded secret from his friends and family. Every superhero has a secret identity. That's how the saying goes. Uncle Ben and Aunt May become increasingly worried for Peter's flaky behavior. Ah, <sighs> Tony didn't always break his curfews. I'll talk to him. Not knowing that Tony has joined an underground fight club to put his powers to the test and earn some money on the side. One day, the Fight Club promoter cheats him out of his own earnings. Consumed with rage, Tony lets petty revenge get the better of him. Hey, hey, stop that guy! He stands and lets the robber get away. Hey, you, stop right there. Every action has its consequence, and that same robber later kills Uncle Ben on the street. Get out of the way, old man! No! Uncle Ben! With great power comes great responsibility. Uncle Ben's words etch deep in his mind. It becomes something like a mantra that keeps Tony grounded in his darkest moments. A changed man, Tony becomes the sworn protector of New York City. Look everybody, it's Iron Boy! We're saved! It's Iron Man. Come on, guys. Just look at these abs. <laughs> Alrighty. Everybody's good. Signing off. And remember, I'm your friendly neighborhood Iron Man. Woohoo! Iron Man's heroic deeds didn't go unnoticed as he is approached by legendary pro hero Spider Man. Hey, kid. I've got a mission for you. Oh, boy. I'm an Avenger now. Spider-Man takes Tony under his wing, and they go on many Avengers-level threat missions. Pretty soon, Iron Man becomes an honorary Avenger. Iron Man is gifted with a rad new uniform, courtesy of Spider-Man himself. Thank you so much, Mr. Parker. From this day forward, Iron Man and Spider-Man become a formidable pair in the never-ending battle against the forces of evil. Welcome to the real origin story of Captain America. Steve Rogers is the blood son of the great Uncle Sam, King of America. Steve is an arrogant prick that likes to pick hey, fights in order to prove his strength and heroism. <laughs> Meanwhile, Steve's adopted little brother, Bucky, grew up living in his shadow. Great Uncle Sam tries to be the best father he could be and treats both his sons equally, but he can never hide his favoritism for his blood son. Look at the drawing I did, Daddy! 
Oh, that's nice, Bucky. Dad, take a look at mine, too. That's amazing, my dear boy. Ten out of ten. Best son I could have ever asked for. Once Steve has matured into an adult, Great Uncle Sam gives him the Shield of Vibranium to prep Steve for becoming king. Steve very quickly gets used to fighting with the shield and soon completely masters the art of shield slinging. Who's the best shield slinging hero there is? Me! <laughs> Show off. Bucky's superiority complex grows and he starts scheming to take over America. On the day of Steve's coronation, Red Skull and his Hydra Troopers invade Amerigard and interrupts the ceremony. The Amerigardians manage to fend the Hydra Troopers off, but not yet King Steve, still chased after Red Skull back to their Hydra base. A real man does not flee in the face of battle. A real man battles to the death. Thanks to his recklessness, Great Uncle Sam strips Steve of his godly powers. Dad, wait! I can explain! And exiles him to Earth. No! Steve won't be able to wield the Shield of Vibranium again until he has proven himself worthy. <sighs> Steve falls in love with a beautiful scientist, Dr. Peggy Carter and begins to learn the ways of compassion and humility. Meanwhile, Bucky finds out that Red Skull is his real father. Bucky, I am your father. Yes! Bucky nerfs Great Uncle Sam and takes over the throne. <laughs> Bucky then strikes up a deal with Red Skull, offering to help Hydra take over Earth if Hydra can help him fully seize Amerigard. Help me kill Steve, and I'll help you take over the Earth. Sounds good to me. Steve and Peggy are in the middle of a lovely date when they are suddenly attacked by Hydra troopers. Why are you doing this, Bucky? We are brothers, you and I. Because you got everything, and I hate you for that. Now, die! Steve pushes Peggy out of the line of fire and proves himself worthy to wield the Shield of Vibranium again. Steve is able to hold his ground with the use of his shield. However, he is still greatly outnumbered. All hope seems lost. When the mighty Avengers finally show up to Steve's aid. You guys picked the wrong planet to invade. Uh-oh. The Avengers emerge victorious and invite Steve to join them. We could use a nearly invincible demigod such as yourself on the team. What do you say? Steve says yes and joins the Avengers. He also marries his beautiful girlfriend, Peggy, leaving his life as the King of Amerigard behind. Now, he fights for the people of America and is known to many by the name of Captain America! The End. This is the real origin story of Hulk. The year is 1942. Bruce Banner is a scrawny kid from Brooklyn, New York. Born with a weak and frail body, Bruce is always being picked on by the kids in his neighborhood. Despite his various health conditions, Bruce is able to stand up to his bullies by sheer determination. I can do this all day. Bruce tries to enlist for the army many times, only to be turned away. Look at yourself, son. You're skinny as a twig. You could get blown over by the smallest gust of wind. The military is no place for scrawny kids like you. However, his desire to serve the country remains unwavering. One fine day, Bruce comes across a shady enlistment poster in a back alley. Are you weak, riddled with health problems? but still want to join the fight? Hey, that's me! Volunteer to be a part of the super secret, totally not unethical government program. Terms and conditions applied. Without thinking twice, Bruce joins the program. He can barely contain his excitement thinking about how he finally has the chance to prove himself. I am General Ross. First things first, sign this waiver. 
here, 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 and here. Congratulations, kid! You are now part of the Super Soldier Program! Let's start with injecting this experimental drug into your body. There is a 50-50 chance that this will turn you into America's strongest and most attractive man. Or you could also die and your family will never hear from you again. Are you down for this, soldier? Sir! Yes, sir! Bruce is asked to remove his shirt and lay down in the ominous, coffin-like chamber. Um, why is everyone standing so far away? All right, Banner, just relax. This won't hurt one bit. Um, okay. Moments later, Bruce emerges a different man. Different as he is now. Um, big, ripped, and green. From now on, your code name is... Hulk. The green skin makes Hulk the perfect soldier for jungle warfare. He blends in easily with the surrounding shrubbery and strikes the enemy where they least expect it. Hey, is it just me? Or is that bush charging straight at us? Hulk smash! Ah! Hulk's outstanding performance on the battlefield garners him much attention and praise. This made General Ross really envious. This isn't fair! I should be the one getting all the glory! I was the one who made that little scrawny punk famous! Consumed by jealousy, General Ross injects himself with the Super Soldier Serum and turns into the Red Hulk and goes rogue! I feel incredible! Look at my muscles! <laughs> hey! My beer belly is gone! Red Hulk steals the Super Soldier Serum formula and attempts to make his escape in an aircraft. <laughs> Put these on the black market and I will be rich! Not when Hulk has something to say about it! Get out of my way or face my wrath! Bring it on! defeats Red Hulk in an epic battle. However, they lost control of the aircraft amidst the flight, and they plunge into icy Siberian waters. Nearly 70 years go by until Hulk is retrieved from the bottom of the ocean and defrosted at S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters. Bruce wakes up to the Avengers staring down at him. Huh? Is this what heaven looks like? Hey man, perhaps this isn't the best time to be asking this, but... Wanna be an Avenger? Hulk joins the Avengers, and he is the only one superhero that gets to be shirtless in the fight against the forces of evil. The end.